have we got the roof bars on. Uh, those two big brackets are to hold the big awning. And there's two smaller brackets on the other side that hold the shower awning. So that's good. Just been getting the measurements right so they're nice and even and parallel to each other. These are still up the last bolt now. The sun's kind of come out, but there's some dark clouds coming over. That's pretty cool. What do you reckon? Sick as. So he's got his shower tent on. Whatever. That's what, that's what it is. And then they're going to put, they've got those emu gull wing doors that, is that what they're called? Gull wings? Emu yeah, they're called our emu wings, yeah. Emu wings, so they're going to put them in the side as well. And, uh, that's the awning, so you've got the bit, and it's looking good. So, this is just the first opening of the uh, 270 degree awning. Does it have a name, this awning? It's called the 30 second awning. The 30 second awning. I know we're not in very good light here, but this gives you an idea of, especially quite big, pretty heavy duty. All welded aluminium frame. Sneak peek of the uh, of the emptiness in there that we're going to uh, create some drawers with. Yeah. All right. So what else am I going to do today? Well, might go put some work clothes on, some grubby clothes, and may look at got a few suggestions from people um, might put some seed and some of that canola straw uh, in the bottom of our swale to help protect to cover the, the earth and also establish a bit of a ground cover now I have made the swale on the bottom flat so I can get a mower in there so we're gonna do like the chop and drop method so when it grows up a bit, we'll chop it down and that will just add to, I suppose, become mulch and uh, like food for the swale, essentially. Okay, so I've just loaded up with some of that canola stubble. It's actually working out really well for uh, moisture like retention underneath. Got it around some of our fruit trees just as, as a uh, experiment and yeah, it's really, really good. So pretty happy with that. We can get more of that from the young fella that dropped it off. He's, uh, well, he's local, he's about, I think his farm's about 40 minutes away from here. So it's actually, um, he actually bailed it all to sell to this company that makes uh, animal feed. They grind it up and put uh, animal feed, turn it into part of their feed. So, but the problem was that there was a couple of bales that had uh, got some rocks in it when it was getting bailed up and the company wasn't very happy with that because the rocks can affect the crusher, create sparks, damage the crusher and sparks make fire not a good result so that's how we got hold of them so i'm just gonna i got some seed which you guys saw so we're just basically basically just gonna do the same thing 
just walking along the edge, I don't want to fall in. As we did last time, and that's hand, throw the seed out, down through the bare earth of the swale here. Um, the water that we did have in it, we were pretty happy with, like it was quite level. And also the water, I don't know how well you can see, but the water has also helped level out the bottom. Because the bottom was a bit loose, like the soil was a bit loose, just from the earthworks and raking it and shoveling and getting it what I thought was pretty level, but the water will sort out the level pretty well. So we're not worried about water running and carrying the seed away. So first step is just to hand throw some seed in the bottom of the swale there. Uh, we've had a few questions about the, the slope here. Um, being our first swale that we made and earthworks capabilities. Oh, we got a visitor. Okay, so we just had a little uh, visit from our friends at Honey Bee Farmstead. Um, Alex came out with the young fellas. They just popped in to say good day. So check them out, Honey Bee Farmstead. They're on YouTube. They're our neighbours, probably only oh, 10 to 15 minutes away. Um, and the young fella, the oldest son, has a channel as well, Aussie Brock Outdoors. Bit of a outdoor camping, you know, making damper, catching yabbies, doing all that stuff that you know, I think young kids should be doing. Get out and enjoy the world, you know. Get covered in mud. Go and catch a yabby and light a little fire and cook it. Bloody awesome. All right, so we're back into seeding. Got the bucket. It's waiting for me. So one of the things I did learn when I threw the seed out for the top of the swale was we were just kind of throwing it, not really knowing what we were doing. But you can tell now where there's uh, heavy patches and light patches of seed. So what I'm doing here is I'm trying to get more of a visual of the seed coverage on the ground because it it stands out to me quite well when I throw it on the ground. You probably can't see it that well on the camera because the seed's only tiny. But um, I'm trying to go for a bit more of an even coverage now that I've seen what happens when it uh, when it sprouts up and you can see bits you've missed and bits you've gone too heavy on. Alright, so now I'm just uh, going to grab the canola stubble and just start spreading it out in there. It's like Groundhog Day. <laughs> Alright, so this is what I was saying about rocks got picked up in it. So, just little rocks like this. So when it was cut, it was obviously cut pretty low. So, uh, that's why the feed mill doesn't want it. So yeah, just sort of show you that. Now I've just got to be careful with the camera because I uh, don't know how full the memory card is and my tech department has actually gone for a little drive for a few hours. So Amanda likes going for drives. Um, her job involves quite a bit of mental thinking and dealing with a lot of people so she likes just to go and put a podcast on or something and go for a drive for a couple of hours, two hours, just to help clear her head. And I don't want to fill the card up straight away because then I'd because I'm not, I'm not qualified to empty it on her computer. All right, that'll do for that one. Now I'm just gonna go get a rake now and just rake that out and spread it out. All right, so I've just run out of seed. Just gotta go back to the shed, get some more. So I've just seeded up to the the level sill. Um, 
Here, as I said, get a bit more seed, and that means I'm closer to the house. So I'm going to go get myself another coffee and check on the young fella. He's over there working away on his four-wheel drive. So, and then what am I doing? Oh, I've had a job request from the boss. Uh, she wants a load of this mulch stuff um, in her little herb garden out the front of the house there. So I'll get a bit more of that and dump that in there for her. Anyway, I'm going to get a coffee and some seed. So Dozer Woes' weekend consists of uh, destroying his ball. Hey, it was new the other day. It's now, well, what do you think, hey? Yeah. So his, his weekend vlog is pretty simple. Just, I chew ball, I destroy stuff. Yeah, and your weekend vlog is, I just wanna go back inside and sleep on the couch. Sit. Good girl. Hey. Oh, good girl. Yeah. She's a cutie. You want to go in there? Yep. And this is the cat's weekend vlog. Um, this is actually a time lapse from Friday till Sunday. This is what she gets up to. Now she has like a little cat bed and you know all this stuff but seriously you put a box on the ground with a towel in it and that's it hey right? yeah there she is hi <laughs> here comes hippo check her out good girl hippo well i made it here so that's good uh, she just wants a load of this dumped in there. Uh, she's working on a bit of a herb garden through this front section here. I like everything this time of year. The weeds kind of get to it, but that's all right. So I will start shoveling this out. Hey, Dozer Wozer. Dozer's come to check it out. We actually got a little fence set up just to protect this from the dogs because you know what it's like. You spend a couple of hours planting plants and stuff in a trying to make a little garden look nice and you turn your back for three seconds and the dogs got in there and dug six holes, ripped up eight plants, done three turds, four wees and managed to roll in it and then come in the house in like three seconds. All right, another little job done. So that's that load emptied and dumped down there as requested by the boss. So I'm gonna go park the ute up, grab the mower for zero turn, and we'll head over to the olive grove and just gonna play around with the mower in there.
guys today Corey is hanging out with Seth in the shed working on his car so I took the chance to go for a little bit of a drive and a hike uh, I am about an hour or so from home in a town called Kawundering I don't know if that's the correct pronunciation um, I've got a beautiful nature reserve here with a few nature walks so i thought you guys might like to see a bit of the australian landscape bushland it's a nature reserve so um we're coming up to spring there'll be some flowers and yeah see if we can catch any like actual nature um and we'll see how we go there's so many tiny birds flying around once you sit still for long enough, they uh, get bold again and come out. Australia has so many <laughs> tiny, like green, grey, brownie birds. Um, it's hard to know which ones are which, especially when they move around so fast. Um, I'll see if I can get some photos for you. There's a board over here that tells you what kind of animals we might expect to see in this area and a little bit more about the walk trail. So I might take you over there and give you a bit of a look. All right, here we go. So the area is originally called Nukamini. Um, and it says basically the, oh, maybe it's Nukam. Nukamini? Nukamine. Not sure. It says the area of bushland or the area of bush surrounding the Nukamine rock, which is a granite outcrop, is um, of great significance and importance to our First Nations people who inhabited this area uh, prior to colonisation. Um, the rock itself was a source of food uh, from all the different vegetation and animals on it. It was also a place for water. Um, from the soaks at the base of the rock, which is uh, quite common in most of the granite outcrops throughout the wheat belt. Um, so it became a meeting place for families, family groups from all around this region. And these are some of the animals we expect to see. Um, bobtail lizard, snail, kookaburra, magpie. Uh, they've got the indigenous names there too, kulbadi. Kunyang for owl, eagle, so that's probably our wedge tail eagle, uh, echidna, willy wagtail, we get them at our place, kangaroo, wardong, the crow, geckos, goannas, emus, and of course spiders. This is the track. Uh, you are here, it's down the bottom. And then it looks like we've got two main walk tracks. So the Nuka Mini Creek Walk Trail and the Nuka Mini Rock Circuit. Um, I'll probably start with the intention of going on the shorter one and we'll just see how much time I lose stopping and taking photos and videos and stuff. All right, here we go. Follow the marked trail. So we'll be looking for those little yellow triangles make sure we don't get lost. This is the start of the trail. See you there and you just look ahead and at the end of the little curve there we've got our triangle. Just keep an eye out for them and yeah let's go. <laughs> shows a change in vegetation or ecotone that is an interzone between the Tama shrubland and the woodlands. In this area we have York gums, salmon gums and wandu. This sort of mixed vegetation is home for many species of Australian shrubland and woodland animals such as the Australian raven, galahs, Australian ringneck parrots, better known locally as 28 parrots, euros which are smaller stockier kangaroos and we actually get them on our property as well echidnas and goannas i'd love to see an echidna 
So guys, let's take the creek walk together. mound. These are inch ants or meat ants and they are very aggressive actually and quite large. They will get very defensive. There's one on the outside, a guard. Get him a bit closer. If I get in close enough you'll probably try to have a go at me. Look at the size of that thing. Look at the size of its nippers. Swapping out some lenses so I can get a wide angle of this beautiful scene here. And I noticed when the treetops, you might not be able to see at the centre of the screen, it looks like there's a large nest up there, maybe from a crow or one of our larger birds of prey. So one thing about Aussie Creek systems is that they are not running all year round. Usually winter, early spring, you'll see water flowing through them. The rest of the year, they tend to just be dry creek beds. So in the tree there, you can see a pink and grey galah. There he goes. There's a whole bunch of them. Like, it looks like there's some beautiful woodlands up there. So I might just go the rock walk a little bit. And I can always turn around and come back. What do you reckon? like this post has become a victim of some termites but we're in the right way oh my god guys look at this place it's beautiful I'll give you a proper look So I'm not going to go any further. I'm going to head back to the car because I still have to drive home and edit this vlog. Um, hope you guys enjoyed experiencing a bit of the Aussie bushland with me. All right, I'm back where my car is now. Um, so I went down what I thought was a really obvious track and then after a while I'm like, I haven't seen any of those markers but this is like a really well used track so I'll be fine right there's like heavy bush either side and I just heard this like thumping and crashing in the bush next to me and I'm just like oh my god <laughs> so I'm pretty sure it was a kangaroo um I was worried it might have been a wild pig because we can get them out here they're like feral um and you don't want to startle them either um 
startling a kangaroo, usually they will run away. But if, um, if you come across a big male who's trying to look after his ladies and his babies, um, things can get a bit sketchy. And like I could smell this real musty smell and I'm like, oh my God, what is that smell? Is that like wild feral pigs or is that like a male kangaroo? Um, so yeah, I was so relieved once I hit the road. I'm just like, why do I do this every time? I do this to myself, <laughs> but I made it back and it was fun. I am back into reception now, so I will touch race with Corey so he knows I'm safe and I will start driving back. There might be a couple of places I stop on the way back to take some photos. I'll show you those if I do. Um, otherwise, I will see you guys later. Bye. going for a drive in this area as well as all these uh, old ruins from when this area was first settled it looks like it's been partially restored but it's still it's still very cool old ruin so the boss is home uh, after a little drive how was it it was nice where'd you go I went to Corundering. <laughs> okay. I went yep. to a nature reserve. Um, went to go to like another place first, but it, the road was flooded. So, plan B. Oh, yeah, but, and you don't have a full drive, so. I don't. Yep. Um, you get any photos? I got some photos. Cool. Well, I've just been hanging around here at home. So, we'll go for a walk. We've got your. Got your pile of stuff in there for you. So, that's good. Thank you, appreciate that. Another job there. Yep, probably not uh, today. No, the day's, the, day's, <laughs> the day's coming to an end now. So, uh, we'll just go over to the swale and have a look. I didn't actually make it back after I said I was gonna go get some seed and a coffee. Kinda got oh. sidetracked to another stuff. <laughs> what mischief are you up to? Hey, what are you up to? And they're off and racing. Mm. Yep, so you can guarantee that after this there'll be eight of those trees that we planted a couple of weeks ago, they'll be flattened. They like having a bit of a run around, a bit of a stretch, sniff, a carry on. Oh! <laughs> He's so athletic for the first five minutes. And then he's just like, ah, I'm bored now. <laughs> so yeah, so that's what I got up to with that in there. Oh, that looks great. Hey, look at that. All sorts of seed under it. Yeah. I'm contemplating whether or not I should do the, like the sides as well, like we did here. Oh, uh, yeah. Down the sides, but I didn't do it today. Yep. See, that, there's three trees <laughs> just in that one, that one little corner that are buggered now. So someone suggested that, or well, actually, I think a few people suggest that along the back edge of that of the swale, that we plant some like ground cover or lower type shrubs and plants along there just to help stabilise where the water comes in, minimise the chance of erosion. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes total sense, really, when you think about it. It does. Um, I'll, need to, I'll need to find some plants for that. Well, that'll be your job to research and find mm. plants. My job's just to, like, be the muscle and the looks. <laughs> so what's really interesting is that we've got quite a few Australian native ground covers that are also nitrogen fixers. I was just so, checking the dogs. So I'll do a bit of research and find yeah. out which ones I can get and which ones would be suitable oh, yeah, okay. for area. Oh, yeah, that, that'll be good. Mm. And we'll get them in in the next few weeks. Yeah. We're coming into spring, definitely want them in. Nothing, uh, nothing really happens too fast around here, as you can <laughs> tell by 
me not finishing the seeding in the little swale today because oh, I've got no doubt you have been doing heaps <laughs> <laughs> and I'll find out yeah. all about it when yeah, I because I and I was worried too that I was going to fill up the memory card too early and then it's like well I can't film anything else because I'm not licensed to operate the computer <laughs> to unload the memory card and then I'll you know yeah, it just won't go down well let's go find our two dogs because I can't see them now <laughs> just do, we were just doing our little wrap up and I got, forgot to say goodbye and dogs sidetracked me and all that sort of stuff but anyway uh, that was just our little adventure my little adventure today and oh what you was <laughs> well you weren't here i had my own adventure did you film any we got proof yeah, of that I oh do. okay all right so we're probably gonna get some of that see I, I don't get to see the footage that amanda takes it's just a surprise and i don't get to see the end movie until it's published i it's not because i won't show it to him but he he likes to be surprised yeah likes to be surprised enjoy the premiere and then yeah amanda knows all about my every <laughs> move all day because it's on video so anyway can't get away with anything if you like what you see subscribe like share do the do's and we'll uh, catch you sometime soon yeah thanks for spending the weekend with us guys see you later later so just when we thought the day was over uh, the dogs have come back into the yard and gone inside and little mister here found some fox poo to roll in when he was out, when he disappeared. I don't know if you know about fox poo, but it stinks. Done it a few times, and he always does it on his white bit. <laughs> so I've just rinsed him off with some soap, and now just gonna give him a little rinse with some water. He's not too happy about this oh, hey. idea. You all right? You good boy. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. All right, how's that? <laughs> How do I know he was gonna come and shake on me?